Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we are revisiting the, I guess, question or the comparison between, that's often brought up between water warships and war thunder, or water tanks and war thunder, or the not very strong argument of world of planes versus war thunder, in my opinion, at least, uh, today. The last time I did this was quite some time ago, and um, my history with war thunder, just so everybody knows, I played a bit way back in the day, like when I originally got my computer, well, built my computer, built my PC. War of Thunder was, of course, one of the first games I downloaded because you see it everywhere on YouTube and such, and um, it looked really cool. And in my field of interest, of course, you know, with the World War II combat with both aviation and ground forces and the recent i don't think at the time they had started naval just yet or if so it was very very early on there's certainly no destroyers or light cruisers i think it i think it was really just the patrol boats that were around in war thunder at that time but anyway of course i started with the german tech tree for ground and the american aviation tree for the aviation lines and um, I grinded it out for a fair bit. Uh, I got to like the first Tiger, the Tiger H1. Played f played with it for a while. Got a bit frustrated with constantly being up tiered. I think that's back when the Tiger H1 was at like five. Um, what's it at now? Like five three? I think back then it was at like five seven or something like that. They they changed the BR so much, and especially with the Tiger in the past, like three years I can't remember exactly but it's constantly being up tiered now the Tiger H1 is in a much better place and the Tiger E is one that gets up tiered all the time because the Tiger E is at 5.7 and anyway after that I took a break from it started to get into the YouTube channel and all and didn't really come back until recently as you guys have seen with the Sunday videos been playing a lot more War Thunder recently with the guys from TSOF and naturally getting back into the ground and aviation lines I wanted to get back into the naval forces to here and just to take a bit of a better look at it played a bit more because the first time I made that video I played I think like maybe five or ten games and then I made the video I didn't really understand what was going on too too much but now I've played it played it a lot more um, especially after the new power update now there's battleships in the game and I'm well early battleships dreadnoughts and I'm working my way toward that mainly on the German naval line because I do have the Prince Eugen I bought the Prince Eugen so long ago to compare it to the one in World of War ships, and I figured, you know, playing the exact same ship in World of War ships versus War, War Thunder would give you a pretty good idea of the mechanic differences. And at the end of the day, when you boil it down, mechanics wise, the games aren't so incredibly different. There's a couple of small differences that, of course, do affect the game overall, um, especially the gameplay between the two of them. But they have a lot of the same ideas and themes and, you know, like the, the mechanics are along the same line. They just execute them a bit differently. But War Thunder definitely takes more factors into account. You know, your your ship list and such when it starts to flood. You actually have to fight flooding. Flooding isn't a thing that just does damage to you, you know, because the main difference is in World War Ships you have a health bar. Where in War Thunder, you have... Well, you kind of have a health bar with your crew, because if that goes down to zero, then, well, that's it for you. But you can be taken out in other ways. Your ship can flood out, and not just, like, you know, flood out in World War Ships where you explode, like, flood out like your ship is legitimately sinking now. And I think that's cool. You know, and how hard you turn, your ship ro rolls over, and your ship does roll over in World War Ships too, but it doesn't affect your, your gun firing arcs at all. In War Thunder, it does if your ship's rolling too far over, your guns can't depress, uh, if it's listing too much, of course, your guns are going to be pointing at the water, so forth and so on. Things like that, that that make it pretty cool. And there's actually a lot more behind the scenes in World of War ships than people like to say or people like to admit to. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than just, here's a health bar, you know, you, you eat a shell, this much damage happens to your ship. There's a lot of interior modeling stuff on the inside of the ships and World War ships that they just don't show you. If you go to some external websites, you can see those models as well, and I've shown them a couple of times here on the channel too. But even with all that, it's not as in-depth as War Thunder is when it boils down to the differences at the end of the day. And honestly, I like the idea of the mechanics in War Thunder. I really do. 
Another thing, too, is the ships feel big in War Thunder. They feel big, they feel meaty, they feel slow. You know, driving the Prince Eugen feels like driving... I mean, shoot, it feels like it's heavier than the GK. And that's saying a lot, because the GK is currently the biggest ship in the game in World of Warships, and it, it, it is a bus if you ever try to, to, to pilot her. It takes her a hot second to turn. And the Prince of Oregon, which is a heavy cruiser in World Warships and a heavy cruiser in War, Th in War Thunder, feels heavier than that in War Thunder. And it should! This is a big ship! If you've ever been to a museum ship in real life, these ships are massive, even destroyers. Um, I've been to the Kid several times. It's not too far from my house. The ship is absolutely friggin' massive, but if you play World of Warships, it's quite tiny because the scaling in, in World of Warships is like that. In War Thunder, not so much. And with War Thunder Naval, there's also that same sense of scales applied to the scale in the game. When you are engaging someone at 15 kilometers in War, in War Thunder, it, it feels like 15 kilometers. You have to fire a raging a ranging shot to, you know, dial in your gunners onto that target, and that takes some time. And they're really far away, even through your high zoom on your optics. It's really, really, really hard to kind of tell what's going on sometimes. Just like with like ground forces in War Thunder, you know, you get sh sniped from across the map, and it's like you know you see a pixel of their barrel was uh, protruding from behind a rock or behind a building or something, and that's what killed you. It's kind of the same thing there with the naval aspect of it. And again, I'm not turned off by that mechanic either. You know, you can get used to that and get really good at dialing in your shots, and I've gotten a whole lot better at that than when I started. I think the match you're watching right now is one of the closer matches I had, and this was one of the first matches that I played when I got back into the game, so I probably make some some derpy decisions here, but this is one of the few matches that I've had where the ships were actually pretty close, where you can see them from darn close in, and it was one of the funner matches I had in, in Naval. And speaking of fun, it's a very slow-paced match in Naval. Not to say that what a Warships is extremely fast-paced, but it's a lot faster paced than most of the Naval matches that, that you'll have in War Thunder Naval. Most of the matches are very long, very drawn out, they're at really far ranges, and again, if you're for that extra bit of realism, then yeah, you probably would like Naval. But there's some downsides that aren't just affecting Naval, but that affect War Thunder as a whole. One thing is, of course, the grind. Now, the Prince Organ's a premium ship, so you can't just go out and buy it like I did. I wouldn't recommend you do that. I would recommend you start at the bottom, work your way up, so you have an idea of the mechanics. Because the first time I bought the Prince Organ and took her out, I had no idea what I was doing. You know, it's a 5-7 ship, which is toward the top of the naval tech tree and the blue water tech tree. And, yeah, that's pretty... That's, that's basically buying a tier 8 or tier 9 off the bat in World Warships, you know. And I recommend against doing that, too, because that's how you just get hated by everybody on your team. Now, if you start from the bottom and want to grind to even just the Prince Oregon levels in the German tech tree, if you want to grind up to 5-7, that's going to take a while. That's going to take a long while, especially with naval. Because one, naval matches are very long and very slow paced. Two, the grind in general in War Thunder takes forever. Even with premium. Even with premium. Because Gaijin just wants you to spend that money to try and make that, get, that grind go faster. For example, the F4. I've been grinding to that for some time. Those of you that have been watching my War Thunder videos or have heard me talk about War Thunder before, I've been trying to grind to the F4 for over a year now in the American Tech Tree. Now, casually, casually, for most of that time. In the past three months, I've really gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I want to get this playing, so I'm going to start playing a lot more War Thunder in my spare time and try to get this playing soon. It took me three months of playing War Thunder in my spare time, about two to three hours a day, with premium time, and of course I purchased a couple of premiums. I purchased the, was it the F-89, if I'm remembering that correctly? The, um, yeah, the F-89B, I bought that one, and that worked for a while. Then they released the Harrier, 
and I like the Harrier in real life, you know, I think it's a cool plane, so I purchased that, and that's a 9.3 premium, and that one really helps speed up the grind, so I grinded from the beginning of the tech line up until about the P51 with no premium account, and that took, <laughs> that, that probably was the longest part, that took about eight months. Eight months of playing War Thunder just casually in my spare time. And then from the F-84 to the F-4C, which I just got last week, that took about three months of grinding in my spare time, playing about two to three, sometimes four hours, uh, for about mm, three, four days a week with premium, using a premium plane, and you know, bombing round targets, just farming that RP, and silver lines, of course, too. Silver lines are a pain to get because of the cost and the way... Kai Kaijin balances things in this game as they increase the civil lions cost for the repairs because that discourages people from playing it more so yeah um, and that took about three months to get to the F4C which is a pain because it's a high tier jet that once you get there you gotta grind through the modifications for it to get the useful modifications like playing a jet at high tier when there's a bunch of missiles everywhere and you don't get flares, you don't get missiles, and you get a gun pod to start with, and that's it. You're completely stuck. That's a pain. And that took me about a week to grind through to get most of the useful things in the F4C, and it's still a pain, and there's a learning curve too, of course, but you would think flying a jet around for roughly a what, month, month and a half now since I got the AV-8 would give you an idea of what to expect. It, it, it does, but when you're in a stock jet, it it's pretty painful. So yeah, now that same thing applies to the ships. You have to grind through all these modifications, even when you get a top-tier vehicle in War Thunder. So when you get to top-tier in War Thunder, let's say if you grinded the naval tech tree and you finally get to that battleship which the top tier battleship in the German line is the SMS Helgoland. I think I said that correctly, probably didn't. So when you get there, once you get there you have to grind things out like well do you want to be able to repair your ship if it takes damage which is something you need to do because things get broken in battle. You have to research that. Do you want to be able to put out that fire? Fire kills ships in real life. Like, quite badly. Oh well, the German Navy didn't send you out with a fire extinguisher. You have to research that. Would you like some ventilation on your ship? Well, you have to research that. Would you like to maintain your engine to where you are at maximum efficiency? You have to research that too. Just really silly things that you need to function just basically in a match you have to research these things now i can understand researching you know upgrades like you know a better engine um maybe a more accurate rangefinder which is one of the things you can research and those make sense but just saying you can't have a fire extinguisher by default or a repair kit by default like, come on. Like, you're going to make me grind away my life to get to the Hegelin, which is a 6.0 vehicle. And then I can't even have a fire extinguisher and have to research that on a completely stock ship. That if anything sets one fire on my ship, I am dead. Like, that, that doesn't make any sense. And that applies to all top tier vehicles in War Thunder. So it's not just a thing that affects naval. It's just a thing that affects War Thunder all in all, that it's like, it's silly that you get to these really high tier vehicles and you have to research things like fire extinguishers. Like, like if you watch the video from yesterday, um, we were playing top tier, well, not really top tier, but 9.0 German tanks. And um, the premium tanks that I had, of course, had night vision, but the, but the, uh, the C2 that I have isn't fully upgraded yet. So it doesn't have night vision. So a tank that's a modern tank doesn't have night vision. But in real life, it has night vision. 
Like, okay. It, we didn't even have a fire extinguisher. If you go watch the first video when I had the C2, I didn't have a fire extinguisher. I caught on fire and that, that was it. I'm dead. Even though the tank comes with a fire suppression system. All modern tanks do because fire is dead is bad. Meanwhile, War Thunder, you just get that right off the bat. And that's what really turns me off from grinding through these ships in War Thunder. Because, like, yes, I want to see them, I want to experience them, I want to play them, but it's also like, you're going to put in all this time, then even when you get through your grind, you're going to have this ship that's stock, and if one, if you get unlucky and get a fire on it, which happens a lot, I'm sure by the footage that you've probably watched already from the Prince Oregon, um, you're, you're dead. Like, it's, it's so stupid in my mind, and it gets aggravating too. And now, of course, you know, it's not going to take a terribly long time to get through that grind for a fire extinguisher, but it's just annoying. Now, if that was it, you know, you just have to grind through a bunch of really silly modules that just inconvenience you for a few days worth of grinding, you know, that wouldn't be that terrible. But there's some other things that War Thunder does that I just don't like and I think is kind of silly or stupid. Like, uh, for example, you can earn what's similar to free XP in War Thunder called... Convertible XP, where it can be used on things like modules. So why don't you just use it to research your modules? Because it costs money. <laughs> it's not like free XP in World of Warships and World and World of Tanks and World of Warplanes, where once you earn that free XP, you can do whatever the heck you want with it. Use it to upgrade modules. Use it to upgrade commander skills. Use it to um, research new vehicles. That is not how you go about using convertible XP. You can use it on anything that you want to use it on, just like free XP, but it's not free. You pay for it. Which, again, is kind of silly. And you earn this stuff at just about the same rate that you earn actual XP. Or RP in, in War Thunder. Meanwhile, with War Ships, you earn a much smaller ratio of it, but you can use it in whatever. I think that's the better system. You know, for the player at least. And of course, Gaijin wants you to convert that XP, uh, that RP, Research that fire extinguisher, research that repair kit, make them that money, and you can too just use golden eagles to just buy the modules too. And again, they kind of encourage you to do that with the sheer amount of them they throw at you to force you to research to truly get the best vehicle that you can out of whatever vehicle you have researched. So, beyond that, the core gameplay of naval is okay in my mind you know if you're a person that enjoys more realistic naval combat this is closer to it it's still arcade you know it's not tr truly a simulator of naval combat you will enjoy worth under naval but you'll have to contend with everything that i just mentioned about the grind and the modules and the researchable, I'm sorry, the convertible RP. There are some things that I think War Thunder does do better than World of Warships and the rest of the Wargaming games. Premiums are a lot more useful in War Thunder, for example. I mentioned earlier, I brought the, I bought the Prince Oigans. Oigans, the Prince Oigan. I can use that ship now to grind the entirety of the German Blue Water Fleet tech, uh, tech tree. Just using that one ship. And it really wasn't that expensive. Premiums in War Thunder are a way, way, way cheaper than in World of Warships and World Tanks and War and World Warplanes. There's a lot more of them because there's a lot more to grind. There's a whole lot more to grind. So, you know, if you buy a premium for every tech tree, a high tier premium, you know, it'll be a pretty penny, but that premium will have an insane amount of usability compared to wargaming games where they're only really useful for useful for grinding free xp and training commanders or crews i guess in world of tanks but in war thunder they'll, they'll go a lot farther your money will go way further on just buying one one premium i also like how you don't have to wait for a vehicle to return from battle to go back into battle with it and i think that's one of the saving things about war thunder because War Thunder in general, there's a whole lot of one-hit kills, especially in um, aviation and in ground combat. But you don't have to wait for the battle to be over, you can just go right back into battle. So, you know, if you get hit, you think it's a bit of a BS shot, and you think it shouldn't have happened to you, 
No worries. Ready back up. Go back into battle. Maybe have a bit, bit better luck. Yeah. And once you understand where to shoot enemy vehicles at and how your vehicle operates, you can reliably get kills. You know, I'm still working on that and bouncing around a lot in the in the ground forces, just you know, playing a bunch of different nations. Um, there are some issues in there too, like with the bushes, like how people just make their entire tanks look like bushes, so you can't see their weak spots, especially if you're a newer player like I am and don't know that you know five pixels up from on the um, on the Tiger II, there's a commander hatch you can shoot, you know, and it's three pixels away from the left side of the tank, you know, but there's bushes in the way so I can't really see it and I don't have the memory to just snapshot right to where it is, you know. But once you do get that knowledge, you can, of course, get kills reliably. However, overall though, I think World of Warships just handles naval combat better. Again, unless you want that more hardcore historical type of gameplay and a bit more of a simulator, a lot slower paced, way to your ships, better graphics for now. 10.2 will improve the graphics in World of Warships by a lot, but still, as good as the ship models in World of Warships are, the ship models in War Thunder are, they, they give them a pretty darn good run for their money. Um, the graphics are a lot better looking for now. Again, we are seeing the devs put a bigger emphasis on graphics in World of Warships, and hopefully we'll see more of this in the future. Not to say that the gr that the models in World of Warships look bad, they look really good, so that the models in War Thunder look much, much, much better. I mean, I, I can't lie there. But the balance is a lot better in terms of gameplay, it's quicker paced, it's simpler to understand and b better for the more casual player to go through in World of Warships, while still having enough depth where you can get some really good competitive gameplay out of it if you stick with World of Warships and you know join a clan and things like that. Um, but War Thunder is a lot more in depth. The balance though, again it's more towards simulator and again for the casual play I just don't think it's the better game right now and plus all those things I mentioned before, the grind, the kind of scummy modules that you have to research just you know everything just to be able to function normally in a battle I don't like that, but, you know, it, it's interesting enough to keep me coming back to it over time and not completely just throw the game out of the window. Anyway, guys, that's what I think about the difference between the two games and comparing them like that. And, again, there's probably a lot more I could talk about, but I don't want this to be, a, like, a two-hour-long video. Uh, if you guys want to see a two-hour-long video, I'll be more than happy to do that and go into detail in depth as much as I understand the, the game. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments down below and we'll see where it goes from there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're away now to 25,000 subscribers. Just passed 22,800 a few days ago and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.